Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about a condition called as Barrett's esophagus. Already we have seen that in gastroesophageal reflux disease, as a complication of GERD, one can develop the Barrett's esophagus. So now, what exactly is this Barrett's esophagus? Let me write here, Barrett's, Barrett's esophagus. See, this topic is very much important, especially for your exams. Okay, very much important for your exams, uh, especially for the FMG exams as well as the NEPG exams. This topic is high yield. So, what exactly is this Barrett's esophagus? Now, Barrett's esophagus is going to be mainly seen in males. Okay, males that to in which years 30. To 50 years okay now already we have seen that this Barrett's esophagus is a complication it's a complication of GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease now what's happening in this Barrett's esophagus normally healthy esophagus is lined by squamous epithelium stratified squamous epithelium let me write here healthy esophagus it is lined by what lined by stratified squamous epithelium okay now in this Barrett's esophagus what happens is see when the acid is continuously getting regurgitated back whenever there is acidic insult from the stomach acid is getting regurgitated back into the esophagus continuously it is happening now what will happen is now this stratified squamous uh, epithelium will be converted into columnar type of epithelium so one type of epithelium is getting converted into other type of epithelium let me write here stratified squamous epithelium is converted into columnar epithelium so this change is called as metaplastic change so if one epithelium is changing into other type of epithelium then it is called as metaplasia okay already in cellular adaptations we have seen hypertrophy hyperplasia metaplasia there also we have discussed change in one type of epithelium into the other type of epithelium is called as metaplasia and they will ask you in your exams what is the basis for this metaplasia what exactly is happening how one cell type can turn into other cell type is because of this metaplasia is because of stem cell reprogramming okay so this is the basics so the basis for the metaplasia is stem cells the stem cells have undergone reprogramming which is leading to changing of one type of epithelium into the other type of epithelium and if you ask me why there is this uh, metaplasia why there is this genetic reprogramming is happening this stem cell reprogramming in this condition it is because of what continuous continuous acidic damage Because of the continuous acidic damage in GRD, the stratified squamous epithelium is converted into the columnar type of epithelium. This is called as a metaplasia. And in your exams, we will also ask you, yes, it is metaplasia, but which type of metaplasia? This is called as intestinal type of metaplasia. Let me write here. This is an example of, Barrett's is of, I guess, an example of intestinal type of metaplasia now why we are calling it as an intestinal type of metaplasia not gastric type of metaplasia why intestinal why the word intestinal it is because see see the word intestine here means in the esophagus yeah we know in the esophagus the squamous epithelium is the replaced by the columnar epithelium but along with this columnar epithelium what else are present is the goblet cells goblet cells 
okay now intestinal type of metaplasia it is because presence of goblet cells okay presence of the goblet cells what do these goblet cells will do goblet cells are the one which produces the mucus okay now it all makes sense right normally esophagus it does not have any protective mechanism from the acidic damage normally acid is something not present in the esophagus acid was something present uh, it was supposed to be present in the stomach now acid is coming into the esophagus now esophagus is adapting the esophageal cells are adapting so that now when compared to the squamous epithelium columnar epithelium is more resistant to acidic damage so because of this continuous acidic insult there will be genetic reprogramming so that the squamous epithelium will be converted into columnar type of epithelium along with the goblet cell formation the goblet cells will produce the mucus so at least now this uh, mucus whatever is there now this uh, mucus is going to use the protective uh, protective lining it is going to form the protective lining which will help in the acidic damage okay so that's why because of the presence of this goblet cell the goblet cells are supposed to be present in the intestines goblet cells are the mucus producing cells in the intestines so because of the presence of the goblet cells we are calling it as intestinal type of metaplasia okay and muc uh, mucus is produced by the goblet cells and if you look here see in this image very clearly seen the esophagus in this area in the lower one third in this area now it is looking this little pinkish to red color so what exactly this is the image based question that they will give you so what exactly is happening in that red color area see that is the endoscopic okay endoscopy of the barrett's esophagus here also i have given it is the endoscopy of the barrett's esophagus identified by the presence of the reddish mucosa okay reddish mucosa is there which can be seen in comparison to the pale normal mucosa see this mucosa is a normal mucosa and this area is barrett's esophagus this is the barrett's esophagus now you already know if the point here okay if the point here they will ask what is a uh, uh, what is the lining epithelium the lining epithelium in this area is going to be stratified squamous epithelium the lining epithelium in this red color area is going to be columnar type of epithelium with the goblet cells example of intestinal metaplasia okay and even you can see on the histology here this is the histology image where it's showing lot of glands all these are the glands okay see these glands are the goblet cells which are producing what mucus now apart from this what else you should know for your exams see this barrett's esophagus it's, is it a type of adaptation yes see barrett's esophagus yeah it's a type of adaptation that is a metaplasia okay now is this metaplasia or the barrett's esophagus is it reversible yes 100 percent reversible okay this is not something dysplasia it's just a metaplasia it is reversible okay so cell adaptations are reversible and even metaplasia is also reversible means if you decrease the acidic insult with the day by day day by day the acidic insult is decreasing so automatically the barrett's esophagus will also come to normal now other mcqs does this barrett's esophagus does it possess any risk of cancer now imagine I'm the person who is having this Barrett's esophagus. First, I'm having initially I'm having a gastroesophageal reflux disease. GERD is happening. Now I'm developing the Barrett's esophagus. Now do I possess any risk of cancer in that area of the squamous metaplasia? Do I possess any risk? Yes. So there is a risk of risk of adenocarcinoma. of esophagus so yes barrett's esophagus it increases the risk of adenocarcinoma of the esophagus see some important points what is the most common cancer of the esophagus the most common carcinoma of the esophagus is squamous cell carcinoma yes squamous cell carcinoma is the most common type and most common site of adenocarcinoma of the esophagus is lower one third okay at the squamous columnar junction so these are some important points which i want you to know regarding the barrett's esophagus 
So let's sum it up. What are the important points which you should know? Barrett's esophagus, it's a complication because of the gastroesophageal refractive disease. Whenever there is a continuous acidic insult, whenever there is continuous acidic re, uh, reflux into the esophagus, the normal esophageal environment is not prepared to encounter that acidic damage. So that whenever there is an acidic insult, what happens is the squamous epithelium of the esophagus is going to be converted, it is going to change its type into columnar type of epithelium along with the goblet cell. So, we are calling it as intestinal type of metaplasia. Okay. And here I want to add one more point. See, on histology, you can very clearly see here these glands are staining blue in color. Okay. So, this mucus it is staining blue in color. Okay. So, what is the stain used for this mucin? Mucus have the protein mucin. So, what is the stain used for this mucus? It's the alcyon blue. Alcyon blue. This is the stain used for mucus. Okay. So, this is the one point which I want to add. And what is the risk? The risk of adenocarcinoma. What is the most common site of adenocarcinoma? Lower one third. Is it reversible condition? It's it's absolutely a reversible condition. Okay. So these are some important points. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.